to this webinar <clears throat> where we will tell you more about the Medical Early Starts Initiative, an essential part of our long-term strategy. My name is Stefan Hovart. I'm the interim president and CEO of the Medical Early Association, and I'm super excited to be here. And I think, I know that a lot in our community are as well. We have more than 325 participants in this webinar showing that this is really a hot topic. Medical Early Starts is an initiative that help, will have a real and long lasting impact on our community. The overall mission is quite simply to lower the cost of starting, scaling and pivoting new ventures in Medical Early. The Medical Early is the global epicenter of health innovation and care and the ecosystem produces very strong disruptive startups and has raised more than four and a half billion dollars over the past five years to make these happen. This in turn leads to billions in M&A and new companies being formed every single day. We do believe though that more can be done and especially for new entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs from underestimated communities. So we've spent a lot of time with stakeholders in the startup ecosystem to understand what and how to make sure that no matter if you are a startup founder needing help to advance, an investor looking for amazing deal flow or a corporate leading leader looking for partnership and acquisition opportunities, Medical Alley is where you start. Medical Alley Starts is an initiative that will make sure that all of this happens. And with that, I'll close my closing opening remarks here and hand it over to Kyle Rolfing, a serial entrepreneur and member of the Medical Alley Board. Here you go, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you so much, everyone who's attending this. Uh, this is something that uh, I've been thinking about and working on for um, uh, a number of years, uh, just what, by way of background. I have been in healthcare for over 30 years and um, for over the last two decades have uh, been fortunate enough to co-found and lead various healthcare startups uh, in Minnesota. And recently um, uh, have joined um, and I'm on the board of Medical Alley and um, appreciate the opportunity to serve there. My strong belief is that um, Minnesota and really the geography of Medical Alley should be the Silicon Valley of healthcare. And I say that because we have amazing companies that are based here, um, like United Healthcare, Mayo, Medtronic, et cetera. The list goes on and on. And through those companies, we have incredibly talented individuals um, that have worked in successful businesses and also understand the complexities of healthcare, which is foundationally really important when you think of starting businesses in healthcare. Having said that, <clears throat> my experience and um, in conversations with other entrepreneurs, we have significant challenges in Minnesota. Um, those are things like it is very difficult to raise money um, in Minnesota as compared to raising capital when you um, reside in other locations like Silicon Valley or New York or Boston or other um, cities that are up and coming like Denver and Austin. And so looking at that, we need to really look and uh, figure out how we address that. In addition, um, although we have large companies in Minnesota, there isn't a really cohesive community whereby it's easy to partner with those companies um, as you're piloting and starting different companies. That's been a theme that we've heard over and over again. We must address these issues. Um, and, and I would point to, if we don't address these issues, we could see healthcare go the way of computing. When years ago we had Honeywell, we had Control Data and other organizations, Minnesota was actually considered the epicenter of computing before we called it technology, um, the epicenter of computing. And now we think, look at technology and we're not even a dot on the map. We lost that, the, all those businesses and that leadership in what we now call technology has left our community. And if we're not careful, that could happen to us in healthcare. Thankfully, Medical Alley is stepping up. They're stepping up with a unique model that addresses the issues that we've um, experienced as entrepreneurs and that Medical Alley has heard from entrepreneurs as well as large companies on how we really come together and address these together to ensure that 
Minnesota and the geography of Medical Alley is the epicenter of healthcare innovation and becomes the Silicon Valley of healthcare going forward. So with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Frank uh, to share more about this initiative. Thanks. Thank you, Kyle. I appreciate the, the remarks and your involvement and support in this effort. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Frank Chastalki. I'm your VP of Intelligence. Um, as we're going through this, please feel free to throw questions into the Q&A function. Um, I'll be watching that. I'll try to answer them throughout. If there's things that you'd like to talk about after the event, our contact information will be at the end. Uh, this initiative is really about listening to you, the entrepreneurs, the investors, and the corporate leaders to build something better. And I'll emphasize that this is the start. This is phase one of our effort. And we will continue to draw ideas for what we build into phase two, three, and beyond with the goal of making this the best place on earth for health innovation and care. So as I go through the slides, throw your questions in, hit me up, let me know what you think we could do better. Um, and if you want to check it out afterwards, the website for the initiative is medicalalleystarts.com. I want to open with uh, the remarks that were given actually at the founding of Medical Alley back in 1984. Lee Berlin, who is an entrepreneur in the drug delivery world, along with uh, Danny Merle Bakken, an entrepreneur who co-founded Medtronic, started Medical Alley on this belief that we have this unique community that can help people to take care of itself. We hold that commitment today, 35 plus years later, and the work we're doing in Medical Alley Starts is to make sure that 35 years from now, that's still true. So what is it that we're doing? Well, we're building an infrastructure with a mission of lowering your costs to start, scale, and pivot new ventures. And we'll talk about why that is. Parts of the services are being delivered right now. Other parts of the services are making long-term investments in the ecosystem. And there is still more to be developed from your input. But you should know this is our commitment to the startup community, to entrepreneurs and founders, to make sure that the future of Medical Alley includes your leadership. Why are we doing this? Kyle mentioned it. Back in the 80s, Minnesota lost its computing industry. It sort of evaporated. 30,000 jobs disappeared in three years. That would be like if Medtronic, 3M, and Boston Scientific simply ceased to exist in Minnesota. And I think there's a little bit of irony, and one of the leaders of that community was a company called Control Data. That image right there is their headquarters in Bloomington. It may look familiar because today it's the headquarters for Health Partners, one of the great healthcare leaders in our community. So we saw that migration from technology to healthcare. We need to make sure that we retain our leadership and grow it, that we are the disruptors, not the disrupted. And the competition is heating up. Communities all around the United States and all around the world are making investments because they want, frankly, what we have. Some of the things we at times take for granted, other communities would love to have the leadership of the large companies, a startup community, investment activity, and they are putting significant dollars into making that happen. And as Kyle said, we think we could be and should be the Silicon Valley of healthcare. There is this huge community of incredibly innovative startup companies at various stages in development that over the next couple of years have a high probability of significant activity in exits or going public or growing into very large companies. Some of you may have seen today, for example, that the deal between Boston Scientific and Preventus closed. That was a startup that came out of Mayo Clinic, grew in Medical Alley, and now is being acquired by one of the leading medical device companies with operations right here. We want to make sure that as this activity happens, that there is a great community of startups behind it, that all of those investors 
and corporate leaders will want to seek out and come and find the next Preventus, the next Bright, the next Prebiotics right here. Two years ago, we formed a group called Realizing the Vision. This was an effort of our board of directors and with help from many of you to identify what are the most important things for the association to work on over the next decade to make sure that this community remained a leader. You identified four key areas, talented workforce, a global epicenter and branding for the region, ensuring we have a strong business environment and that we have a strong entrepreneurial ecosystem. We took that to heart and have been working on it for the last two years, drawing input from many of you with the help of Kyle and so many others to get this start. Most importantly, it was developed by and for entrepreneurs. I always think of Medical Alley Association as we're a producer, we take your inputs, we help you organize, but you are the talent, you are the experts on what needs to be done. We've had this fantastic committee made up of four board members, uh, Jody, Lee, Kyle, and Nicole across the top, and four additional members, Morgan, Joe, James, and Pam, who have helped us to understand the unique on-the-ground challenges of being an entrepreneur or an investor at different stages in this community. We also have received fantastic support from our foundational, and our sustaining member organizations. These are member companies who have stepped up their investment to give us the resources that are needed to invest the time and the effort and the team to develop this and other initiatives. So what is it that we're doing? Well, we first started with identifying the challenges that existed and a number of things were identified, but when we boiled it down, one thing kept coming up this idea of critical and credible connections that quite often, especially first time entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs that are going from one industry to another can spend months just trying to make the right connections to the right people, investors or advisors in order to put their company together. They have limited capital and limited time in order to reach critical milestones that they need to get to that next stage. So we came to understand that if we could shorten that timeline, we could reduce the cost and the risk for these entrepreneurs from first time to serial. The second thing that was identified was finding credible connections helping companies to make connections with people and organizations that by their affiliation help that company, help that entrepreneur to open doors faster and open the right doors faster. So with that insight, we started designing programs. What we also learned in doing that though, there was a challenge on the other side of the equation that many of the large companies in this ecosystem and frankly around the world would like to do more with startups, especially early stage startups, but they run into certain challenges. There are a large number of startups that would want to work with any corporate partner and that could be relevant, but they're not a perfect fit. They're early, they need development, or maybe they've developed in a certain direction that isn't quite aligned with the strategy of the company, but they see potential. When we would talk to the large companies, they want to help, they want to volunteer, they want to invest, they want to acquire, they want to partner, but they have competing priorities, they have limited time and resources, just like any of us. And so they needed an efficient way to engage early, to influence business model development, and to find novel ways of collaboration built on trust. So one of the other aspects of this that we've been working to build out is how to more efficiently engage the large companies with startups in a way that is productive and respectful for both sides. The third challenge that we identified was relative to the ecosystem and this idea of being scalable and sustainable. We've been fortunate over the last five years to see the formation of multiple new accelerators and incubators that are doing incredible work 
Big shout out to G-Beta MedTech, one of the first in the community, supported by Boston Scientific and Mayo Clinic and the University of Minnesota, to Techstars and United Healthcare for their commitment. They do incredible work, but they work with a small number of companies providing in-depth, intense support. There are also relational networks. You may have left a large company and there are former colleagues who are now in startups or investment. The challenge has been in both of these is that they work with a very small number of companies and that leaves out those people who didn't have that relationship or aren't appropriate for an accelerator at this time. So what we've focused on building is more of an infrastructure that's sustainable. We have a business model as an association where we can do this ongoing and it's scalable. In 2020, as we piloted this, we worked with 301 different startup companies. So instead of duplicating what is already being done, we can complement the work of existing accelerators, incubators, and relational networks and gap fill for the broad range of companies that don't yet have those connections to draw on that deeper set of resources. So now let's talk specifically about what it is that we're doing. I'm gonna talk about this in just a couple of phases. Phase one is what we're doing today. It's what we launched on the 22nd. And if you're a startup company, an investor or a corporate, you can take advantage of this today and you should reach out. The first one is what we're calling the expert network. This is that critical and credible connecting to help early stage founders in particular find advisors or mentors as they need them, to find the right kind of service provider that's comfortable with startups that answers your specific question and helps to make connections into those corporate entities that might be partners, collaborators, or co-development organizations. We leverage the large network of the Medical Alley Association membership you know, it's 650 different companies from around the world doing everything under the sun in device and digital health and biopharma and diagnostics. And we work to speed up your ability as an entrepreneur to find the right resource at the right time. The second one is we've built out an investor network. And I, I want to be very clear here. It's not a database. There is a database, but that really is not the value. If you wanted simply a list of contacts, you would get a pitch book subscription and find them to your heart's content. What we heard from entrepreneurs and what we heard from investors, though, was that they often don't have the relationships to get the warm intros that allow for that dialogue and discussion early on where the startup can get input on what they might need to do in order to be relevant to the investor, or that the investor can find opportunities that they didn't know were there because they don't know the people yet. So we've spent our time not just building a database, but building relationships to understand what are the funds specifically looking for? What are their inclusionary and exclusionary criteria? How can we help them to make it easier to find and want to do deals in Medical Alley and then use that information to speed up your process of finding the relevant investors, making a connection and getting an answer, yes or no, more quickly so you spend less time struggling to find that right investor. This has been incredibly well received by the VC community, where there is increasing recognition of the strength of healthcare in the state. And for funds that don't have feet on the street, they see us as a way to very quickly get to know you, find out the lay of the land, scout for opportunities, and start making those investments that they might not otherwise do. The third one that is active today and is truly a long-term investment and goes all the way back to the founding in 1984 is what we call the Global Epicenter Campaign. Earl Bakken's original idea was that Medical Alley is a place. It is the state of Minnesota. It's the global epicenter of health innovation and care. And what he wanted to do was stamp every box that was shipping out of every company in the state with a Made in Medical Alley sticker so that people would know that if they were looking for the best in healthcare, this is where they would find it. 
we have ongoing a national branding campaign to build up recognition of you and of your organizations and connect them to this region such that over time people will recognize that if a company is in Minnesota, which is Medical Alley, it must be a high quality healthcare organization and I should want to get to know that company. This may take years to truly pay off in the full sense of it, but we're committed to making that investment and building a, an infrastructure and laying a groundwork for your company to have greater success. Looking ahead, some things we're working on right now that we're hoping to debut later in this year, and I would ask for your input, your ideas, your feedback. You know, you as the stakeholders, we want to make sure we stay aligned to your needs. We've heard a regular need for this idea of peer groups, of founders supporting other founders along their journey, being able to talk with people who are going through the same kind of thing you are, share that experience, share the network, help develop each other's leadership skills. And I think crucially, and fortunately increasingly recognized, the importance of supporting each other's mental health. What we heard from so many of you is that being an entrepreneur can be a lonely endeavor, a high stress endeavor, one that has a lot of costs beyond the time and the money that you might put into your venture. And so we want to create an environment where you feel supported, where you have a network of, or you have a community and a network, and you have the ability to get through those tough times and have a greater likelihood of a successful venture. Beyond that, we're thinking about what else do we need to be doing? We've heard all kinds of ideas from all kinds of entrepreneurs. We have some initial concepts. And what we'd like to get from all of you is what else should we be looking at? You might have ideas for specific solutions, bring them on. You may also have ideas of what other challenges we haven't yet addressed, and we want to hear those as well. And there was a, a question in there about the, on the investor's side, what is the first step that someone should take? Um, the first step really would be to send us an email or give me a call and let's have a conversation about what you're doing and figure out who we can plug you in with or what resource you might need. But first step should always be just send us a note and let's start a conversation. Please keep the questions coming. Last part I'm going to talk about is there are a couple of things that Medical Alley Association does already, part of our regular membership offering that also are very supportive of startup companies. And if you don't know about them, you should make sure that you do know about them. And just as an aside, if you're a startup company and you're not a member, please do reach out. You know, we see this as a long-term investment for the community. We have very flexible ways of working with early stage startup companies. Our goal is not to get the most membership dues out of you today. It's to deliver value and make sure you're a successful company. So the first thing is we make referrals. We made over 10,000 referrals and introductions last year. If you're trying to hire, you're looking for a supplier or a consultant, you're thinking about an international market, maybe you're a little more developed, reach out to us and we'll help you speed up identifying that resource. The second one is, and a very tangible thing we have, is our cost savings program. We have a program that runs $500 million a year through it and helps member companies to get better prices on a whole range of services. If you're a biotech member, this is one of probably the most valuable tools that we have out there because your lab supplies, your instruments, your chemistry, you can get significant discounts from air gas, from VWR, that we've seen some member companies where they save a million dollars plus and they're a pre-revenue company. This is capital that you can take out of OPEX and then you can put right back into R&D, to marketing or to anything else. Uh, we have a question from uh, Gina asking, what are the plans to provide reverse pitches from companies? Um, that is something that has come up, and I'll follow up with you separately on the more specifics of it, but we are talking with some groups about creating forums to get startups in front of the appropriate, say, 
potential customers, potential pilot sites, potential collaborators in a, a lower burden, lower stress environment that's more about how do we help the companies position themselves right for partnership as opposed to simply pitching what you have today and hoping it aligns with the strategic interest of the company on the other side. The next thing is our public policy program. We have for many years advocated for initiatives that are meant to make it easier, particularly to access capital. So we wrote and helped to pass the original angel tax credit. Our government affairs team is actively working on it this year to secure additional funding and make it permanent. We've worked on making the R&D credit refundable so that startups with no profit, no income can take advantage of it. And we're strong supporters of LaunchMN and the great work that they're doing statewide to catalyze entrepreneurship. They've been a fantastic partner to Medical Alley and to Medical Alley starts getting off the ground. We wanna know what policy issues might be impacting your business. As we go and lobby, whether it's in DC or in St. Paul, if we know the things that matter to you, we'll make sure you have a voice in that process. And I can promise you, it's an incredibly effective and thoughtful voice. So what are some ways to get involved with this? Different ways for different kinds of companies. I would ask if you're a startup, reach out, or if you know a startup company that could benefit from what we're doing or has ideas, please put them in touch. There can't be too many. You can contribute your time. We're especially looking for people who have been entrepreneurs in the past and would be willing to share their experiences, their insights to help other entrepreneurs. You may have services that you could provide at a discounted rate, or you might want to donate in order to help especially those earliest stage startups get plugged in. Uh, if you want to contribute money, there are sponsorship and mission enhancing opportunities, or you could look at becoming a sustaining or foundational member and support the broader mission of the association. And the last one that I'll mention is use the Medical Alley brand in your brand. You are based in Medical Alley. That was Earl Bakken's vision that it's a place. And when we go out to the community, and there's a press release that might say from Plymouth, another one from Maple Grove, another one from Rochester and Arden Hills. People outside of Minnesota don't connect the dots that that is all one place. But if you start telling them you're based in Minnesota's Medical Alley and another company does that and another company does that and we're running that campaign behind it, over time people will connect that all of this amazing innovation is in one place. And if they're an investor looking for the best deal flow, they're gonna come search it out. If they're a large company looking for acquisition targets, they're gonna come search it out. And future entrepreneurs thinking about where they may wanna live, they're gonna be drawn to this community and wanna choose to live here. And I get a couple of questions in there. The loss carry forward, I was brought up about having like net operating losses and carry forwards. Uh, we have done some work on like being able to securitize net operating losses. We continue to advocate on that. And if there are other ideas, please do reach out and let us know how that would impact your organization, good or bad. Um, and then there's a question about the branding piece on startups in the images and the marks. If you're interested in having the Medical Alley brand as part of your brand, uh, on our website under the newsroom, there is a brand kit. You can also email me and I can send you the info. We've got logos, we've got messaging tools. It's a way not only to enhance your brand, but also to give back to the entire community and make everyone a little bit better. Um, and then Josh, I see your question. Let me follow up with you separately. It's a little bit of a longer one for this forum, but I'll, I'll give you a call right after this. Uh, oh, sorry. The last thing I'll say before closing is I know we have a number of service providers out in the community who work with startups or who want to work with more startups. 
just so you know, because it's been asked a few times, if you're a member already, you are a part of Medical Alley Starts. This is an initiative of the association. It's not a separate organization. If we have startups that need your help, we're going to call you right away. And if you'd like to have a greater involvement or you have ideas, reach out. Let's start a conversation. And so with that, I want to close where we started with the rest of Lieber Lin's dedication to the founding of Medical Alley back in 1984. And, you know, I've had these words on my desk for 16 years now, and it still, still moves me today that there is an entire community, 15,000 companies, 500,000 people across the state of Minnesota, across Medical Alley, that wake up every day to make this true. Our commitment as an association is to try to make your work a little bit easier so that more people around the world benefit from life-saving and life-improving health innovations created right here in Medical Alley. And with that, I'll stop. I'll check the questions real quick. Um, and please, if you have other questions, keep throwing them in. If it's easier, send me a note after this and we'll catch up. Um, there's a question about PPP funds. The, I don't have any insight on that right now relative to being directed to startups. I will find out about that, Joe, and catch up with you. Uh, there's a question about what are elements we might adopt from other successful clusters. You know, the we do a lot of work with our peer associations around the country in Massachusetts and California and Florida and elsewhere. Um, I think the the commonality that they have around success in all honesty has been a string of large exits that draw attention to the region and then lead to a recycling of capital. If you look at the medical device industry in Minnesota, we've had that for decades where there have been exits, the founders who do well seed the next set of startups who then have exits and do it again. We need to keep that going, maybe reignite the energy. And in our emerging digital health and biopharma communities, I think we're primed for that to happen soon. But if there was one factor, big giant exits that lead to recycled capital seem to be the way you get the flywheel really spinning. Uh, Ah, there's a question about distinguishing or separating women-owned and led startups from others. Um, it's a really great question. One of the things we found in doing our stakeholder conversations, that the challenges that an entrepreneur faces are multiplied for uh, women founders, for people of color founders, who may not have as established networks as some of the more traditional parts of the entrepreneurial community. So we believe, and we've seen it so far in the pilot work, that the impact is more significant for those founders where we can more rapidly expand the network and try to make that road a little bit easier. But it's an area we know there's more work to be done and we'll continue to work on. Um, there's a question about, I think, specific to MedTech on quality and regulatory costs. You know, the biggest area we do work in this has been our work with the FDA. Uh, many of you will know we have a long history of working closely with the Food and Drug Administration on science-based regulatory policy. Um, it's now been 10 years, but we helped to create the Medical Device Innovation Consortium, a DC-based organization that takes industry input on the challenges in the regulatory process and the advancing science and or the advancing regulatory science and collaborates with the FDA to more quickly get those new study designs, bench test methods, and other approaches adopted so that you have a lower barrier to demonstrate safety and effectiveness. You know, I would talk about like the uh, early feasibility program, the EFS program being one of those great successes and helping to speed up development while maintaining or even improving safety and efficacy. And then uh, I think that was all the questions that are on there. So if there aren't any others, I will let everyone get back to their day and I'll say, please check out the website, send me an email with your ideas, your requests, your complaints, and put us to work. It's a pleasure being of service to all of you every day. 
we're just getting started, so let's have some fun. Thank you, and have a great day.